All right, let's talk about the relationship between solids, liquids, and gases for a substance, and let's bring it all together. Uh, solids, liquids, and gas phases of a substance can be summarized in something called a phase diagram. A phase diagram is a graph or a plot. It is a plot that has pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. In this diagram, there are lines that represent the substance uh, transitions between the three phases, and it's going to look something like this. Now, I am drawing this freehand, just be aware. The plot itself will look something like this, and what we have represented in this area of the graph are pressures and temperatures where the substance is in this solid phase. What we have represented in this region of the graph is pressures and temperatures where the substance is in the liquid phase. And in this final region of the graph, we have represented pressures and temperatures where the substance is in the gas phase. So if I want to know, once, once I have one of these experimentally determined plots, if I want to know at this particular pressure and this particular temperature, what phase will the substance be? I would simply find that point on the graph, and I could conclude the substance will be a liquid at that particular pressure and temperature. Um, these lines represent the transitions between the phases. And so, for example, this line, this purple line, represents the melting point of the substance at the variety of pressures indicated on the graph. So at this particular pressure, the melting point or the freezing point of the substance is represented as this temperature. We also can call this the phase transition or the phase boundary between the phases of solid and liquid. And so along this line, that represents the phase boundary. And along this line represents the temperature at which the substance goes from solid to liquid or the temperature at which the substance melts or freezes at the given pressures. Similarly, we can look at this line. Now notice that this line is not linear. This is the line, and it does end at this point. This is the line that represents the phase boundary between liquid and a gas. This represents the boiling point. Again, you can find the boiling point at a given pressure by simply following it on the graph. Um, at these phase boundaries, we say that the two phases are in equilibrium with each other. So along the phase boundary between the solid and the liquid, we say that the solid and liquid are in equilibrium. Along the phase boundary between the liquid and the gas, we say that the liquid and the gas are in equilibrium. This phase boundary down here represents the phase transition between solid and gas. This is the process of sublimation. These are the pressures and temperatures at which the particular substance on the graph will sublime. So this graph represents a pure substance you can find the, the phase boundaries or the phase transitions based on the lines represented. And you can record or read pressures and temperatures that correspond to melting points and boiling points or sublimation points for the given substance. Let me clean it up a bit, and we'll talk a little more about it. Again, I'm drawing this freehand, but you get the idea. Essentially what we have here in this cleaned up version is we can, we can talk about some of the other features. Um, one feature that we want to look at is this point where all three of the phase boundaries come together. This is known as the triple point. The triple point represents the pressure and the temperature. We can talk about the, the pressure at the triple point, the temperature at the triple point. It represents the pressure and the temperature at which all three phases solid, liquid, and gas are in equilibrium with each other. This transition between the solid and the liquid typically extends on to infinity, uh, if you could get to those pressures and temperatures. But the liquid to gas phase boundary does not. It comes to a stop at a particular point, and this particular point is known as the critical point. The critical point represents the temperature above which only the gas phase exists. On this graph, this temperature at the critical point, also known as the critical temperature, is so hot 
that you have overcome any intermolecular forces no matter how high your pressure is. You can go up and up and up in pressure, but the energy is so high among the particles that you've, you've given it enough um, heat energy because you've raised the temperature enough that the, that the substance only exists in the gas phase. So above the critical point, only the gas phase exists. The pressure at the critical point is known as the critical pressure. Um, that's the pressure required to make the gas go into the liquid at the critical temperature. But above that critical temperature, you cannot have the liquid phase. You only have the gas phase. All right, let's talk about one more thing. You'll notice that this boundary between the solid and the liquid is sort of gently sloping the boundary between the liquid and the gas. This is actually the clausius clapeyron equation of pressure versus temperature. This would be the vapor pressure versus the temperature. Um, it's not a straight line because that's not a linear relationship for that particular transition, but it's a fairly linear transition between solid and liquid. In this example that I've given, this slopes slightly forward. Let's look at another example. All right, for water. Water's phase diagram has a feature that is different than most substances in that the solid to liquid phase boundary actually slopes slightly backwards. This sloping line, this backward sloping line, gives rise to the fact that the density of ice is slightly less than the density of liquid water, and that's backwards than most substances on this planet. Usually in the solid phase, you have more a more dense substance. But for water, the density of the ice cube is actually a slightly less than the density of the liquid water. And so ice cubes float. And that is a direct result of this phenomenon of this backward sloping line uh, for the solid-liquid boundary.